we are all spending more time in front of our screens. We can work, play and rest and never leave their glow. And ironically, this has become a problem for the people who put things on those screens. Film and television prefer to avoid how central our smartphones and laptops are to our lives, as there is something inherently uncinematic about a character staring in silence at their computer. However, some filmmakers have taken this as a challenge, and are exploring novel and naturalistic ways to approach our relationship with the screen. From this challenge, a small subgenre has emerged, a handful of horror movies and thrillers where the action takes place entirely on the computer screen of a perspective character. While it is easy for some to dismiss this cheap-to-produce format as a gimmick, the genre has already developed a unique aesthetic and a set of recurring thematic occupations. A few titles have been suggested for the genre, but none have quite stuck. Computer screen thrillers, desktop films, but I think monitor movies or monitor horror works best as it also speaks to the genre's already established fixation with security, anonymity, and the literal fear of being monitored. These stories are most successful when they tap into our real fears concerning the intangible virtual world that dominates our lives. Using the recognisable space of our desktop lends these stories an uneasy familiarity, close to how found footage uses its format to mine fear from a sense of reality. Now perhaps monitor horror is a gimmick, or just a variation on the found footage theme. Or maybe it's an innovative new format in its infancy. And if so, does it have something profound to say about how our days, minds and modes of communication have been radically altered by the world of the screen? Gallons of virtual ink have been spilt over the way we are increasingly living our lives in public. Social interaction has never been more complicated as we must contend with the image we project both off and online. 2014's Unfriended is a supernatural horror movie about a group of teenagers haunted by the ghost of Laura Barnes, a classmate who committed suicide after being humiliated online. The film is told entirely through the laptop screen of Blair, Laura's childhood friend, while other characters only appear through a group video chat. Despite the fact that we never see Blair outside a frame of the messaging app, we learn about her through the content of her screen. Everything from her choice of music, to the organisation of her desktop, and even her targeted ads. Unfriended exhibits some genuinely innovative horror filmmaking, most effective when it imbues the real features of our monitors with menace. It makes the empty face of the default Skype profile seem seriously unnerving. It also hides windows behind other windows, building tension over what might be watching us just out of view. Despite relying on the old horror staple of the avenging ghost, the underlying threat of Unfriended is actually exposure, shame and losing control of how we're perceived online. As the film progresses, we learn that Blair and her friends all have something to do with Laura's humiliation and that they all have their own secrets buried beneath the clean veneer of their online personas. Nobody except the ghost takes control of their screens, exposing their secrets and turning these characters against one another with evidence from their private chats and internet history. So to say we're living more public lives is only half the story, for we are simultaneously living more secretive ones, and this observation is also at the core of the 2018 thriller Searching. In Searching, David Kim's 16-year-old daughter, Margot, suddenly disappears. He then begins an obsessive, screen-bound search to find clues to her whereabouts. By accessing her private messages and interviewing people he believed were her friends, he finds that Margot might not be the person he believed, as even the people we know best can live entirely different lives online. But Searching is not entirely pessimistic about the social implications of technology. In the opening 10 minutes of the film, we watch a virtual record of Margot's life so far, through photos and videos stored on the computer of her parents. It's a highly effective and touching montage of time passing, contradicting the popular talking point that this technology is a hindrance to human relationships. We've never had better devices to record and store our memories. In her famous TED talk from 2010, Amber Case tells us that we are all cyborgs now. 
arguing that our computers and smartphones have become a form of external brain. These memories we are storing on our devices are as real and probably more accurate than the ones that take residence in our head. With this in mind, the most ambitious possibility of the monitor genre is how it can function as an exploration of these now partly visible interior lives. We feed our screens with decisions and ruminations with an immediacy that falls somewhere between thought and verbal articulation. Searching and Unfriended demonstrate this by showing characters consider and sometimes abandon ideas in real time. Searching actually makes poignant use of this by showing David's uncertainty over connecting with his daughter. He writes but then retracts this intimate declaration, taking it back before sending it. This simple but well-observed moment shows us how online communication gives us more control over what we say but that this control can stifle intimacy and build barriers to honest interaction. We navigate our keyboards and touchscreens as automatically as we do the alphabet that appears on them. As such, our screens can act as windows into thoughts still in the process of formulation. In short, it is a new and naturalistic way to read a character's mind. The media prophet Marshall McLuhan, featured here in his iconic cameo from Annie Hall, said that societies have always been shaped more by the nature of the media by which we communicate than by the content of the communication. Which is to say the technical processes that we use to send information are often more consequential than what we're communicating through them. The monitor genre is unique in how directly it can approach and analyse what has swiftly become a major mode of social interaction in the modern world. One of the smartest narrative devices in Unfriended and its 2018 sequel is how the characters are privately messaging members of a collective Skype chat that is going on simultaneously. In what other genre can we witness two characters communicate with one another privately while both are in concurrent conversation with a wider group? This is a strange facet of modern communication that only this genre can show explicitly on screen. The monitor genre offers filmmakers some exciting avenues to explore, but it's also an inherently constrictive format that can be difficult to navigate. The most obvious challenge to believability is in keeping a character in front of their computer screen for the duration of a film's plot. 2014's Open Windows struggles with this in particular. Elijah Wood's isolated character, Nick, is manipulated by a hacker and forced to perform a series of illegal acts while maintaining constant contact with his laptop. This includes a climactic moment where he is still speaking to the laptop while taking part in a high-speed car chase. And both unfriended films have to manufacture reasons to keep their characters from calling the police or just shutting their laptops and walking away. Characters are often forced to act illogically just to keep the concept going. While Searching might have the most sophisticated narrative out of all these films so far, it stumbles into contrivance by its final act. It also somewhat cheats the format by playing security camera footage of a police interview that David's computer would certainly not have access to. Open Windows is full of such cheats, and seems to get tired with the format altogether by the film's final act, opting to use fictional imaging software to show what's happening in the boot of a car or in a secret underground bunker. Open Windows is by far the least successful entry in the genre, mostly because the screen world it depicts drifts so blatantly from one an audience would recognise. It uses fictional applications and far-fetched technology, and as a result the screen does not look or behave like our own. This decision saps the story of the relatable power that is the genre's biggest asset. The hacker antagonist of Open Windows also has access to a plethora of technological abilities that are so exaggerated that they stretch believability to breaking point. And this problem recurs in Unfriended 2 Dark Web, which swaps the avenging ghost of the original for a community of sadistic hackers. These hackers are virtually omnipresent, with the ability to remotely switch off life support machines and blur the faces of anyone on camera that they choose to. The first Unfriended succeeds in its simplicity. The way it uses long stretches of silent screen scrolling builds tension way more effectively than the score that underpins similar sequences in the sequel. It's like adding music to the Blair Witch Project. It breaks the trick of reality that is so integral to making the scares effective. These films work best when they mimic the real ways we interact with our devices. 
If the desktop does not resemble our own, then the format loses its power. The monitor genre may seem like a shortcut to making a cheap feature film, but the restrictions it imposes can be difficult to negotiate and overcome. But this can be very productive. The history of filmmaking is filled by artists who have forged a path of innovation through the construction of self-imposed obstacles. It is possible that the monitor genre could remain a small, unprofitable avenue of filmmaking, but I hope that isn't the case. Searching and Unfriended demonstrate that the genre can be scary, involving, and even emotionally resonant. And there is room for wider genre experiments that take the format away from horror, and perhaps into comedy or drama. Our computers and smartphones aren't going anywhere soon. And if they are actually replacing the function of our brains, then to ignore them is to ignore a seismic development in how humans communicate and interact with the world. <laughs>